good day to everyone. Okay, so this time what we're going to have today will be Irrational principle is square root and more examples. Okay, so I am already done explaining illustrative example no number one. Let's proceed now to illustrative example number two. Okay. Number two, given the square root of 10. Let's answer question number one. So, same questions lang yung sasagutin natin. We're just only going to differentiate. Uh, we're going to derive or describe the differences between the, the illustrative example number one that I presented to you a while ago and etong uh, example na to. So, question, for question number one, is the radicand Diba? Ito yung radicand natin. Remember, radicand yung nasa loob. Is the radicand perfect square or not perfect square? To answer that, let us go back to the chessboard because it will help us a lot para ma-identify natin kung perfect square nga ba or hindi. Let us make a block of six, uh, 10 squares. There's my 10 squares. Meron pa ba tayong ibang possible? Okay, tignan natin. Now, may I ask you, is it a perfect square? C? Okay, uh, magawa pa tayo ng ibang possibility. Okay, that's a block of 10 squares, di ba? Bilangin natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. C? Is it a perfect square? Malabo na tayong makagawa ng perfect square kasi 10 squares lang siya. So, um, I don't see any reason para tawagin mong square to. You clearly see that this is a rectangle. So, our answer for question number one is that this is NPS. NPS means it's not a perfect square. Okay? So, I don't have to discuss in detail. Kita nyo naman. Let's proceed to question number two. For question number two, what are the factors of the radicand? Factors. Hanapin natin yung factors niya. Okay? So, going back to the chessboard that we have a while ago. Diba yan yung ano natin? Yung pen natin. And we say that it's not a perfect square. Paano natin nahanapin yung factors? Again, um, bilang tayo ng square simula do, papunta sa kanan. So, how many squares are there? One, two. Okay? Bilang naman tayo ng squares papunta sa baba. So, this is one, two, three, four, five. Okay? Kung hanggang saan ka natapos, yun yung i-multiply mo. Two times five, the answer is ten. So, again, like what I said a while ago, um, this chessboard is just but, uh, uh, I mean, itong chessboard na to ay naka-anchor doon sa multiplication table ninyo, di ba? When you were, uh, you, we are used to using the multiplication table para mahanap yung sagot. Diba? Para mahanap yung sagot. Ngayon, ang silbi ng multiplication table ay para mahanap yung factors. Okay? Yung factors. So, let us go back again. Now, what are the factors of the radicand? If we are given 10, diba 10, ang factors niya ay walang iba kundi 5 times 2 or kahit maling tarin man natin, 2 times 5, they are just the same. So, yan yung factors niya. Remember factors? Number, nakapag times natin, ang sagot ay yung radicand. Okay? Then, after natin makuha yung factors, proceed to question number 3. Okay, for question number 3, write the factors of the radicand in exponential form. Again, di ba ang radicand natin ay 10? So, kung ang radicand natin ay 10, at ang factors niya, kasi sabi daw dito, isulat mo yung factors in exponential form. Ang factors niya ay 2 times 5. Makakagawa ba tayo ng exponential form niya? 
The answer is cannot be. Cannot. It cannot be. Hindi tayo makakagawa ng exponential form out of these factors that we have. Kasi bakit? Magkaiba sila. Take note. Makakagawa lang tayo ng exponential form kung magkaparehas ng factors. Kunwari, parehas 2. Parehas 5, parehas 6, parehas 7. Pero kapag magkaiba sila, therefore, cannot be. None. There is no exponential form of 2 times 5. Eh ma'am, pwede po bang ganyan? No, no, no. Magkaiba yun. Pwede po ba ma'am na ganito? No, no, no. Okay, hindi ibig sabihin na kapag nakakita ka ng ganto, yan ay 2 times 5. Remember what I told you a while ago. This is small number here. Tells how many times the base is to be multiplied by itself. Tung maliit na numerot na to, siya ang magsasabi kung ilang beses mong ita times si to sa sarili niya. E di ba eto ay 2 times 5? So magkaibang bagay yun, ha? You have to remember it always. Okay? So cannot be none. Next, let's answer question number 4. What is the principal root of a square root of 10? Okay. Para masagot natin yan, ba ang hinihingi natin, ang hinihingi dito ay square root of 10. Ano daw yung pinakasagot nito? Principal root. Para masagot natin to, unang tanong, ba sinagot natin yung tanong kanina sa number 1? Is it a perfect square? Perfect square daw ba yung radicand natin? Ano nga yung sagot natin? It's not a perfect square. Pangalawa, yung factors ng 10 ay magkaiba. Pangatlo, hindi tayo makakagawa ng exponential form ng factors ng 10. So, kapag doon sa tatlong questions na yun na pinagdaanan mo, ay nas, uh, identify mo na hindi pwede Therefore, ang principal root nito is a non-terminating number. I mean, sorry, a ter uh, yes, a non-terminating number. Ibig sabihin, hindi exactong whole number ang makukuha mo. E paano mo makukuha ang principal root nito? Na dapat daw, uh, di ba sabi natin kanina, dun sa square root of 16, sa square root of 16, ang sagot natin dito ay 4. Tapos yung kanina, na present ko, yung pinakauna, ang square root ng 36, the answer is 6, di ba? Kasi 4 times 4, ang sagot ay 16. And then, 6 times 6, ang sagot ay 36. E, paano kung meron ka ngang square root of 10? <laughs> ano ang principal root niya? Pwede ba yun? 2 times 5? Hindi. Eh, dapat ang ilalagay mo dito ay isang number lang nakatulad nito. Isang number lang talaga as in. Ano yon? Yung base lang. E, di ba hindi nga tayo nakagawa ng exponential form? So, kapag ka ganito, ang solution ay... Okay, punta natin ang magic calculator. Alright. So, ito yung magic calculator natin. Hanapin natin ang square root of 10. You see that? Ayan. See that number there? Yan ngayon ang... Yang mahabang number na yan. <laughs> yan ang principal root ng square root of 10. So, kunin lang natin hanggang... 5. Okay, so ang principal root nito ay 3.16227 and so on and so forth. Diba? Mahaba yung number na yun. Yan. Yan ngayon ang principal root. Now, um, ganito. Para ma-check natin, ang gawin natin, diba? 4 times 4, 16. 6 times 6, 36. Check natin. Okay, so gamit ulit tayo ng calculator. Diba? Um, 4 times 4, ang sagot ay 16. 
So, tama tayo dun sa ano natin. Um, unang example, 6 times 6 ay 36. Um, and then, i-times natin yung... Okay, so i-times natin yung 3.16227 sa sarili niya. 3.16227 you see, 9.9999515. Okay, kaya ganyan, halos, di ba halos malapit na siya sa 10? Kita nyo? Halos malapit na to sa 10. Hindi talaga siya eksakto. Kasi nga, di ba, 10 is not a perfect square. So, hindi talaga tayo makakakuha ng eksakto. So, balikan natin yung presentation natin kanina. Now, yan, nasagot na natin kung anong principal root natin. At sabi natin, ang principal root natin ay ito. Now, um, so let us have question number 5. Now, is the principal root of square root of 10 rational or irrational? Diba kanina sinagot natin na ang square root of 10 uh, is equal to 3.16 2 to 7. Kita mo naman, naka-decimal number siya. So, kapag ka naka-decimal number, automatic, that is an irrational number. Okay? Irrational na siya kaagad. Okay? So, yun yung um, example number 2. Now, I hope na intindihan yung difference nilang dalawa ha. So, dito sa illustrative example number 1 ay perfect square yung radicand. Dito, not perfect square yung radicand. Now, let's have more examples. Okay, so for our example, complete the table. There's your table. And then, what you're going to do is to fill in the table with answers. Let's have number one. For number one, uh, we have the square root of 64. Now, question, uh, for question number one, sagutin natin to, is the radicand perfect square or not perfect square? Di ba ang radicand natin ay 64? So, kung ang radicand natin ay 64, is it a perfect square? Yes, it is. It's a perfect square. Next, what are the factors of the radicand? Ano yung factors ng 64? Dalawa ha, dalawang number na pag tinimes natin, ang sagot ay 64. Daw. 8 times 8, you may just check uh, into your calculator, okay? So, 8 times 8, and then, kita mo naman, di ba, magkapareha sila ng number. So, that means, we can write the factors in exponential form. And that is equal to 8 squared. Bakit nga squared? Bakit, bakit, bakit 2? Bakit 2 yan? Kasi, dalawang 8 ang nakita mo. Okay? Then, next, Answer, what is the principal root of the square root of 64? Kung baga, hanapin mo na yung sagot sa square root of 64. Anong sagot natin? 8. Paano nakuha yung 8? Yung base lang yon, Okay? Yung base. The next, is the principal root rational or irrational? The answer is automatic rational. So, kapag nakita mo na perfect square siya, rational na yon ka agad. Kasi nakakuha ka ng eksaktong principal root. Next, let's have the square root of 56. Is it a perfect square or not perfect square? The answer is it's not a perfect square. Okay, bakit hindi siya naging perfect square? Kasi ang factors niya ay 7 times 8. Hindi tayo makakaisip ng number na magkaparehas na kapag minultiply sa sarili niya, ang sagot ay 56. So, 7 times 8 lang, di ba? Okay? Now, write the factors in exponential form. Maisusulat mo ba? No! Kasi, magkaiba sila. So, we write none. What is the principal root then? If that is the case na ang 
na ang ang radikan mo is not a perfect square therefore tapos ay um, magkaiba yung factors hindi magkaparehas that means ang principal root ay kukunin mo sa pamamagitan ng paggamit mo ng calculator. Okay? So, mag-calculator ka. 7.483. Kapag tinimes mo to sa sarili niya, ang sagot ay 56 na yun sa loob. Okay? And then, is the principal root rational or irrational? Kita mo naman, naka-decimal number. So, that's irrational. Okay? So, I hope you learned a lot in this lesson. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye!